Okay, in our video series of rheumatology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about polymyalgia rheumatica. We are going to discuss the presentation, the causes, as well as the diagnosis and treatment of polymyalgia rheumatica in detail. A 70-year-old lady comes to your clinic and tells you that, Doctor, I have been having these severe pains, aching pains in my shoulders, in my pelvic girdle for the last few months. I have been experiencing pain in my neck as well. I have been having this low mood and malaise all the time. My pain in the shoulders and the pelvic girdle is worse in the morning. It's get, it gets better as the day passes by. But when I take rest and when I start walking again, the pain is worse. Pain that gets worse in morning, pain in shoulder, kildles and neck, old age associated with fatigue, low mood. That is a classical presentation of polymyalgia rheumatica. What is polymyalgia rheumatica? Polymyalgia rheumatica is an inflammatory disease characterized by muscle pain, stiffness of the muscle and generalized systemic symptoms. Old age patients having muscle pain, stiffness in the body, especially in the pelvic girdle, in the shoulders, in the neck and generalized systemic symptoms like fever, low grade, malaise, fatigue and low mood. It classically affects female more than males and it is a most common inflammatory disease, inflammatory rheumatic disease in elderly. The second most common overall. So it mainly affects the elderly population, the elderly females, age greater than 70 and it is rare in young patients. Etiology is unknown. We do not know the cause, what might be the cause of polymyalgia rheumatica, but there takes place an inflammatory reaction and that inflammation affects the muscles. Genetic component is there. HLA-DR4 has been associated with polymyalgia rheumatica and a very high yield, a very important association of polymyalgia rheumatica is with the giant cell arthritis, a heavily tested point on exams is the association with giant cell arthritis. Remember, if they give you a, a history of a patient like this, general, uh, patient having fatigue, patient having malaise, patient having pain in the shoulders, in the pelvic girdle, in the neck, and with that, the patient also has tenderness on the temporal area. Patient has pain in near the eye, in the temporal area, and the ESR is elevated. That means that that patient has temporal arthritis the next thing in these patients is to start steroids the clinical features include the musculoskeletal pain it affects the shoulder the neck the pelvic girdle then it is new onset pain and it is symmetric pain which is worst at night it is worse when the patient wakes up in the morning there is morning stiffness greater than 45 minutes that is also called as gel phenomena that when the patient is resting when the patient is sitting the pain is worse when the patient starts moving the pain improves and the patient is experiencing so much pain muscular atrophy takes place due to limitation of activity in these patients other clinical features include constitutional symptoms like mild low-grade fever weight loss night sweats few fatigue malaise and low mood depressed mood is very common with polymyalgia rheumatica in the diagnosis you do the inflammatory markers esr is elevated which shows that there is some kind of inflammation going on greater than 50 mm per hour crp c reactive protein is also an inflammatory marker and it is also elevated in polymyalgia rheumatica Leukocytosis may be or may not be seen in this. With that, normochromic, normocytic anemia is seen because this patient is having chronic inflammation and body tries to hide the ferritin. That's why these patients have normochromic, normocytic anemia. ESR is important. CRP is important. If these patients of polymyalgia rheumatica have a headache, temporal tenderness, that means that that patient has temporal arthritis and it's an emergency straight away starts to die in, in such patients. Other than that, creatinine kinase is normal. 
remember creatinine kinase is produced whenever there is breakdown of the muscles now in dermatomyositis in polymyositis where there is inflammation of the muscle there is muscle breakdown in drug induced myopathy there is muscle breakdown and creatinine kinase levels are elevated in these conditions while in polymyalgia rheumatica creatinine kinase levels are normal that is a very high yield point that is the most important point in this whole video that creatinine kinase in, is normal it is the differentiating point a differentiating point from drug induced myopathy polymyositis dermatomyositis that we are going to discuss in our other videos in which there is increased ck in polymyalgia rheumatica the creatinine kinase is normal that's how you make the diagnosis if creatinine kinase is elevated maybe it's polymyositis if there are skin symptoms with it that is dermatomyositis if the patient is taking statins our ck is elevated that is drug induced myopathy but there is nothing like that the ck is normal and still the patient is having severe pains old age patient with normal creatinine kinase but elevated esr that is a hint so it's mainly a clinical diagnosis there is no specific test for it all the tests are non specific tests but they give you a hint that this might be polymyalgia rheumatica and the most important thing in polymyalgia rheumatica is that if you suspect polymyalgia rheumatica you start steroids as the treatment and if the patient improves with steroids within 2 to 4 weeks there is significant improvement when you start steroids in such patients when you start steroids and the patient improves it confirms the diagnosis that this is polymyalgia rheumatica if you start steroids after 2 to 4 weeks there is no improvement you increase the dose but if still there is no response it means that this is not polymyalgia rheumatica because the classical thing for polymyalgia rheumatica is that it responds to steroids it improves with steroids rheumatoid factor is also negative there are no auto antibodies that are present so it's mainly a clinical diagnosis increased esr the clinical symptoms and normal creatinine kinase old age polymyalgia rheumatica other differential diagnosis is that you must have in old age osteoarthritis is very common rheumatoid arthritis but in rheumatoid arthritis there will be involvement of the small joints of the hand deformation of the joints sle auto antibodies will be positive polymyositis ck will be elevated cervical spondylosis where there is age related degeneration wear and tear of the cervical discs hypo and hyperthyroidism they can also present with proximal muscle weakness always look for the signs of giant cell arthritis very high yield very important new onset headache in these patients jaw claudication visual impairment that is a hint that this patient is having giant cell arthritis esr is elevated the next thing to do is straight away steroids if you don't start steroids these patients will get blind treatment is low dose prednisolone now remember if you have diagnosed a patient with polymyalgia rheumatica you you have a clinical suspicion you don't have a specific test for polymyalgia rheumatica all you do is that you start the patient on low dose steroids if the patient responds to it it is polymyalgia rheumatica if the patient does not respond to steroids it is unlikely that it is polymyalgia rheumatica you start with low dose prednisone 15 mg per day and if there is no improvement in 2 to 4 weeks what you do is that you call the patient you follow up the patient in 2 to 4 weeks the patient comes back on the follow up visit you do esr or crp now some studies show that crp is more important than esr in the follow up if esr and crp are going down and the patient symptoms are also improving it means that it is polymyalgia rheumatic and you are going in the right direction if there is no improvement in 2 to 4 weeks and esr crp are coming down but not to an extent or they are not coming down but in such situation what you can do is that you can increase the dose of steroids because we have started from a low dose we can give a trial of higher dose steroids higher dose of prednisone 25 mg per day and then you again follow up the patient in few weeks if the patient's pain is not improving if the esr crp are not coming down 
it is unlikely that this is polymelge aromatica. If it is polymelge aromatica, the patient with a higher dose of prednisolone will definitely get better. Then, if the symptoms improve, you slowly taper the dose of prednisolone. How do you taper the dose? I will discuss that in a while. Rapid symptomatic relief is seen in 2 to 4 weeks after starting steroid in polymelge aromatica. Gel phenomena is a phenomena that occurs because patients when they wake up in the morning, they uh, when they are rested, there is increased pain and the pain improves with activity. That is gel phenomena. Therefore, if you give a single dose in the morning, these patients by the evening again start complaining of severe body pains. So what you do is that you do split dosing. You do the BD dosing of steroids. Steroid in the morning as well as in the evening. Although steroid can disturb the sleep, but a split dose is helpful in these patients because in the evening they again start to develop the symptoms if they do not receive steroids. So split dosing is preferred due to the gel phenomena in these patients. How do you taper the steroids? Now let's say if the patient is on 15 mg of steroid and the symptoms are controlled with the low dose steroid. For the next 3 weeks, you start the patient on 12.5 mg of steroids. For the next 4 to 6 weeks, you start 10 mg of steroids. For the next 4 to 6 weeks, for every 4 to 6 weeks, you reduce the 10 mg to 9, 9 to 8 mg, 8 mg to 7 mg and you give it for 4 to 6 weeks every dose. It might take 1 to 2 years to wean off these patients from steroids. So it is a long period that these patients will be on steroids. So you need to make sure that you do counselling for steroids as well. Counselling is very important in these patients. You have to tell them that you cannot stop steroids suddenly. If a patient is taking steroid for more than 3 weeks, that patient is steroid dependent. And if he stops taking steroid, that patient will develop adrenal crisis. Because when person is taking steroids from outside, the adrenal gland starts to shrink. And when the adrenal gland starts to shrink, they do not produce steroids. And if the person stops taking steroid, the adrenal gland do not produce steroids. Therefore, the patient will develop adrenal crisis. When the patient develops adrenal crisis, there will be hypoglycemia, hypotension, shock-like state. So you tell them that you do not need to steroid, uh, stop the steroid on your own. You need to continue the steroid and keep following up in the clinic. Another mnemonic that you can use to remember the things that you have to do when a patient is on steroids, that you don't stop mnemonic. As for sick day rule. The sick day rule is that whenever these patients get sick, you tell them if you get sick, if you get an illness, if you get a flu, you have to double up the dose of steroids during the sick days. Or you come to the doctor and you increase the dose of steroids whenever you have the sick days. You give them a treatment card. You tell them that you are on steroids whenever you go to the hospital for any treatment. You tell them that you are having a steroid treatment going on. O for osteoporosis, steroids cause osteoporosis. You give them calcium supplement, you give them bisphosphonate, you keep an eye on the bones. You do the DEXA scan for these patients to look for osteoporosis. Then these steroids can also affect the stomachs. Steroids cause GI distress, very important. Whenever you give steroids to a patient, always, always adds proton pump inhibitors to these patients because steroids cause GI distress. So don't stop mnemonic that you can be used uh, that can be used for patients who are on steroids. If you liked my video please click on the subscribe button. In summary we talked about what is polymelge aromatica. Females are more commonly affected of the old age, unknown etiology associated with giant cell arthritis, the symptoms, the constitutional symptoms, low mood, ESR is elevated, CRP is elevated. CK is normal while CK is elevated in polymyositis and other causes. The differential diagnosis always look for signs of giant cell arthritis. If there is giant cell arthritis, straight away start steroids. Treatment is to start low dose prednisolone 15 mg per day 
and if there is no improvement in 2 to 4 weeks, you increase the dose. If still there is no response, it is unlikely that it is polymyalgia rheumatica. Consider other diagnosis. If the patient responds, slowly taper the dose. How do you taper the dose of steroids? And don't stop the things that you have to do when the patient is on steroids. If you like my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine lectures, infectious medicine lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine, emergency medicine, ECG lectures. If you really like these videos, you can support us on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you very much.